here. Put your feet together. You, you don't have to stand up. Put your feet together. Feel that you turn your feet inside your shoes. Just feel you turn your feet inside your shoes. There's a few creaks, but isn't that easy? Can't you feel your body now rotating? Face <laughs> dancing when people start to rotate from the upper body. Then everything else stops down here. The reaction becomes, sorry, the action becomes nothing. All we have is a reaction. We've got no action from the base. So I can't stress strongly enough that the rotation in waltz is, if not the most important, one of the most important actions. Push on the butt. Very good. We push, maybe is a bit of a strong word. We increase the pressure to the floor, which enables us to rise. Let's try that. Press down into the floor and the reaction is we rise. Now put your feet together. Soften your knees. Don't straighten your knees. Press into the floor. Use the action of that pushing of the weight against the floor to create the reaction of rise. Right? So we're rising through pressing down into the floor. What about lower? We, we lower from above. We lower, let's say, from the shoulders. And we receive the lowering action in the ankles. When it goes wrong, especially in the walls, is when we lower from the hips. We don't want to lower from the hips, otherwise we look like we're sitting down. So we lower through the shoulder weight down into the floor and we rise by pressing against the floor. Now this is, is very evident when we dance a natural turn in waltz. To close our feet, we press against the floor. To lower, we lower through the shoulders. We press against the floor, we lower through the shoulders. You see many couples dance a natural turn, they drop to lower and they pick up the top to rise. Now, where is the musicality in that? There is. You count for me. One, two. One, two. One. No good, is it? Again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Can you see the body weight starting already? This is musicality. Excuse me. Before we actually move our legs, there is music in the body. One and two. Two and three and one and two and three. Very important, as Barbara was saying in the Latin lecture, to think about the half beats, to split the beats up, to think when is the body moving. It's not leg and body together in swing, swing dances, it's body before leg. Think of timing your body, not just timing your feet. Should we through movement as well? I like to teach the girls to feel that their moving leg goes with their poise. So in other words, if I move back on my left foot, my head shape, I'm not a very good girl, but I'll try my best, my head shape is with my moving foot. My balance is with my standing foot. When it goes wrong, most of the girls I see today take the poise and the balance with the moving foot, so they're in trouble. So the balance must stay with the standing foot on a natural turn, that will be the right foot. But the poise can go with the moving foot. And <laughs> so stroke the floor with your foot. Stroke the floor. That's it. Now as you're doing this, keep your weight forward. So your weight is on your right foot. Now put your arms into position and put your head towards your left foot. That's good. That's better. Now what you must do when you're doing this is make sure that you create Contra body movement to allow the man to walk forward. So put your left shoulder forward this way towards your right knee. Put your left shoulder forward towards your right knee. That's good. That's good. Now, gentlemen, don't they look fantastic? Do they? Do they? Dance it facing camera. You can see the action that my knees are moving over towards the right side here. My head weight is staying on the outside of the circle. When most gentlemen go wrong, they take the head weight into the inside of the circle, which makes the step small. This way, so my head, sorry, my legs turn to the right, my head stays on the outside, and I can swing through the action. If I come on the inside of the turn, through here, my head weight comes inside. It feels very comfortable, but it doesn't look big enough. It's not voluminous or dynamic enough. Oh, you got frightened. <laughs> I want to show you now how we can develop those actions. I mean, we've talked about the natural turn, we've talked about how we can keep on the outside of the turn with the heads for the gentleman and using the standing leg and the moving leg for the lady with the poise. 
I want now to talk about how we can use our feet and ankles once we have this balanced posture and position and movement to show musicality and more musicality. Now, how we can use the standing leg and the timing through the moving leg to create the smooth release of action. Now, Michael, let me do that with you. Don't get any ideas. I don't do this every day. I do really. One, two, three, stop. Now, what we're going to do here, Michael, we're going to rotate and, and lower through your left leg for one. Now, this foot that is swinging, this leg that's swinging, will pass the standing leg on and. Now, keep it there. We're now going to release the swing two and three and. So, we're actually taking much more time through the movement and swing over the standing leg. So, here we go. And. One, two, three, one, and two, and three, and good. So we're now filling those three beats with half beats, and the swing of the leg is so important. Martina, feet longer. Think of half beats. Whenever we dance anything with swing, don't just dance one, two, three, and gone. Think about where the weight is passing over the foot. As I lower through here as a man, one is down through my right leg. What I don't want to do is move off my right leg. So many people forget the energy that they've created through the natural turn, through this wide dynamic shape. And they get to here and all of a sudden, it goes. Hey presto. I'm actually going to keep that same energy where it is through the shape that I have and dance one. I'm actually still over my right foot, one. I'm not moving to my left foot this way, so I'm actually dancing one. I'm using my right foot, rotating and lowering, not one. From here, I want to increase the timing to and. One and, two and. Who can tell me what happens on the two and count? Something to do with the lady. Something to do with the lady. Who? She brushes her feet. Not because she's been told to brush her feet. Because she has to do that because the man is leading it. Now, Amanda, you're going to do me a favour here, aren't you? If I don't lead it, do it anyway. <laughs> so we dance. One and two and three. There was a bit of a sort of a look in the middle there, wasn't it? You like my aftershave? Yeah, lovely. Good, thank you. One and two, little brush and three. One and two, three. And just to show that I'm not sexist, I'm going to have a go here with Ryan. I can say that, can't I? One and two and three and one and two and three. That was fantastic. That was brilliant. It's very good. Now, did you feel there, ladies and gentlemen, that you're using your feet more? You've got more balance now anyway, haven't you? You warmed up anyway, I think, a little bit more. Now, the most important thing to think about as a man when you move backwards is, of course, don't move backwards. The ladies do it for most of the time, and they're used to it. It's second nature. And they've got bigger heels that keep them forward. That's my excuse anyway. But when you move backwards, the worst thing that the man can do is feel he's got to go backwards and he's off. And then the feet start coming off the floor. Like that. I have a name for that, but I can't say it on camera. But it starts with the letter V. Anyway, when you go backwards, you mustn't have rising toes. You must keep your weight forwards, gentlemen. The lady needs you to give her support. After all, although she's taking the man's part and moving forward, she still has to have the correct poise. It's important she doesn't start doing this, tiptoeing through the tulips. So, our legs here. It's difficult for the man to, to understand that if he's moving backwards, he can't start to turn. He's got to allow the lady to come through forwards. And this happens so often. We see the men either looking where they're going to go next or trying to do something spectacular with the feet. Before you know it, the girl's on the floor. Dangerous. So, what I want you to feel, gentlemen, as you come forward here, is feel you're dancing on one track, and Amanda, the lady, is dancing on the other track. Your weight is forward. You could close your feet together. Beautiful closing of feet. I'll do that with the boss. For the ladies, it's important here not to get over eccentric with the head movement. So, make a spot, spot something out, and keep on that direction with the head shape. Good. Oh, perfect. These fellas are good, aren't they? The ladies, I think, in this step, which is a very popular step, the running weave, tend to start waving their heads about like a palm tree. 
They want to feel the music, they want to be musical, but in the end they're doing something here that they're not doing down here. And it looks very, very bitty and very, very manufactured. So when I'm teaching, I would teach the girls until they get the feeling through the legs and the feet to keep the head in one position and turn the body under the head. So if I do this to camera, I'm looking straight ahead, I'm rotating underneath my head to the position that way. I can keep my head in promenade position if I like, so I can stay in promenade position and stay there, but still I'm keeping the CBM feeling through the action. When it goes wrong, the ladies go, I, I say like windscreen wipers. They start in there over here, over here, over here, here. You see it? I bet, I bet some of you did that earlier. Oh, now think here of swing and turn. Swing and turn produces shape. We don't try and think of a reaction, which is sway, before we do the action. The action is swing and rotate. The reaction is the shape. So I sometimes teach this with a tray. And I don't know what you want to put on the tray, beer, champagne, cup of tea, whatever. But that must not spill. I'm keeping that shape and I'm not losing it. So many people would have that much mess on the floor, but that chap off the advert licking the floor, wouldn't he? Awful, wouldn't it? Terrible. So what we need to do from here is make sure and try and feel that the elbows and the arms are actually parallel to the floor. I can create as much shape through my body and music through the knees and the ankles finishing in the head position as I want. I can make curves, but I never make backward curves. I only make forward curves or sideways curves. I'm never making a backward curve sideways curves. Ladies, when you're doing this, the same thing applies to you. You don't want to be shaping through your arms. Shape through the knees. The beginning of the lecture I spoke to you about trying to keep the knees towards the man. In this step it's imperative. Keep your knees towards each other. They're great friends, those knees. Don't become enemies. Don't go in opposite directions. Keep your knees moving together. Should we try that? Now, what I want to try and show you here as a lady don't let your head overtake your body. Some of the ladies are getting here and going, the head is first, the body second. Remember, it's so important to action and activate your body before your head. This is beautiful, isn't it? Be well, hmm. it should be beautiful, but it's a reaction from the body, not an action. Ugh. On my head, lad. So from here, we stay there. The body moves, then we turn. Don't we look good together? Ah, oh, I tell you. Martin, I'll do it with you. <laughs> so we dance through to the tumble turn, and I actually produce here the shape as the man through towards Martina. Funnily enough, my right hip belongs to Martina's head. It does. And can you feel that, Martina? Yes. Yes. Of course. <laughs> How do I explain that to Karen? One, two, and three. There, my right hip is producing that shape. The musicality is seen in the lady's head, but it's actually produced from my legs and from my hip. But you didn't know that, did you? Ah! Now try that together. The trick is here, the more you do physically is better, but the less you look physically is also better. Then you seem to do less, but you move more. Before, you did more, but you move less. And there's, there's method in that madness, isn't there? You, you are actually doing as much, if not more, but you don't see it because it's coming from the correct place. It's coming through the feet, coming through the ankles. In your mind, you think of moving backwards in the running weave, creating the space and the speed into the tumble turn. But in actual fact, you're detracting away from the movement. So the movement has got to come from the feet and the ankles. Now, music, can I borrow you for a second? I'll show you this action if I turn too quickly. So I'll go straight in without any messing. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm there still doing nothing and cramp setting in because I'm past 22 now. Here we go, 23 next week. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm continuing the actual. Oh, thank you. That was for you. Thank you. I'm making sure that I'm filling the music out with my body and leg action. I'm not stopping. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Whether you can notice now that my foot has rotated to allow my right hip to move forward through to the girl. 
I think sometimes most people try and keep a soft right ankle, which stops the right hip from moving through. So the music is finished. I want this to continue on forever. And my feeling is my shape ends forward and up, not side and down. Forward and up, ladies and gentlemen, this way. As if I'm throwing something up into the air that way. So I'm not coming into here and making a shape this way. Now for the girls, it's very important that you maintain your promenade position as long as your balance can allow you to. Most of the girls get to here and before the foot has passed underneath the right hip, they've changed. Now, they end up leaning backwards and it feels as though you're doing everything right, but the shape is so small. So ladies, I'd like you to feel here that you move and stay in this shape, promenade, as long as you can. Your foot passes under your hip, you're still in promenade, now you go through to your throwaway over sway position. And this position of the top of the legs being closed is so important. The feeling should be that the body again is curved, not really unlike the natural turn with the left foot back for the lady, that feeling a very strong CBM, in this instance CBMP, to make that shape. There's the feeling of rotating underneath the hips, the top of the thighs, and being in this position, not having the shoulders behind the hips. Do you think we could try that? You see, I think that the main thing here is that we're creating loads of musicality through timing. Through speed, yes, but how do we create that speed? It's not by being quick. We can be quick in the legs, quick in the knees, quick in the feet and the ankles, but the body is reacting to what this is doing. I'm not trying to get in and get out. Feel that music. This is a beautiful piece of music. It's very drifty, very full. Try to be full. I think one of the points that was always stressed to me as, as a competitor, and I think about when I'm teaching, is to make sure that the ending of a line is as good as the entry into the line. And so many people think, right, I've finished the line, I'll get on with the next step now. What needs to happen is we need to finish the fullness of that line out with the same amount of stretch and elasticity in the body to close and come out to promenade position. It's so important to finish something off better, if you like, than when you went into the line. So make the exit look positive. Amanda, can I borrow you for a second, please? Here we go. Here we go. Pressure. So we're in the throw. A beautiful throw over this way. Now put your back into my hand. Oh, with no weight. That's good. I'm going to collect your shape. And now we come to promenade position. Good girl. It's all right. It's my foot, but don't worry about it. I've got another one, ideas of musicality. Remembering that musicality is impossible unless we have maybe four or five different ingredients. We need our balance, singularly, the man and the lady. We need our positional balance as well, together. We need our posture. And we need to feel that we have dynamic shape through movement. Remember, musicality starts at the feet and ends at the top of the head and the tip of the fingers.